want to thank the Lord. Amen, sis. Amen. Absolutely. And I want to go right behind uh, sis for thanking God for being with her through everything. And you know, I want to thank God for answering the uh, his people's prayers. Uh, they go hand in hand. Thank God for what he's done. Thank God for people's uh, prayers and thank God that he hears those prayers and he answers those prayers. All righty. I think I have uh, well, probably spoken on this before, but there's so many things we've spoken on before. But uh, I want to uh, speak on it again, maybe in a different way. It's been a good while to my knowledge. Uh, but it's something that pertains to everybody. You know, uh, through this life... Uh, I'm sure we all know people that uh, claim to know the good Lord. I've been a Christian for so long. And then before you, uh, the next breath, it seems like, they're talking like a sailor. Now, something is wrong with that picture there. And many people can't stand somebody. Uh, and a lot of times it, it'll be a family member. I hate my mom. I hate my sister. Whatever. Uh, that's against the word of God. Because God teaches everybody in his word. If you cannot love your brother or sister, mom and dad. But the scripture says if you cannot love your brother in whom you have seen. How can you love God in whom you have not seen? So uh, people need to realize that it's like I told a neighbor the other day if people would simply quit uh, just going to church and listening to the man up on the pulpit and open open the Bible themselves guess what a lot of people that uh, some people have been going and listening to for years they'll find out that they've been lied to They'll find out that they've been uh, under false doctrine for years and years. Not everybody, but I'll tell you what. False doctrine is taken right over. It's taken right over, or so it seems. But at the same time, uh, it falls into the category of thanking God again uh, for people that will stand up on His Word and uh, preach His Word not their opinion, not the, uh, man's doctrine, not man's religion, but preach the word of God. And uh, the word of God, I'll tell you right now, uh, will step on everybody's toes. I know it stepped on mine, but uh, when I come to learn uh, the knowledge of the truth, the truth, it didn't set me free uh, uh, at, uh, at first. Why? Because I would not allow it to. Uh, it uh, tore me apart. It made me angry. It uh, uh, caused me to be a little arrogant. Well, I don't know who that preacher is, but uh, I know he, he don't know what I've been doing. I know he can't be talking to me, one of those. But see, God knows what we've done, what we've been doing, what we have done. And God uses his uh, preachers and teachers to get through to the sinner. Because the word says, how can they believe except that they hear? And how can they hear except there be a preacher? God puts preachers in place so the people can hear the truth. And then once they hear the truth, the, uh, it's totally up to you and I as individuals what we will do with it. We will either accept Jesus in this walkway of life as our Savior and then uh, maybe go through trials, tribulation, even sometimes hardship. But see, and I want to do away uh, with something else here. A lot of people 
uh, until when everything is going good. It goes under the category of uh, uh, things are easy when we're up on the mountain, but when the faith is tested down in the valley, uh, we need to understand that God, He is indeed the God of the mountain, is He not? But He's also the same God and has not changed whatsoever in the times of the valley. Uh, but many, and I brought that up because many people, uh, uh, when everything is going their way, uh, they they just love God and everything's good. We go to Bible study, we'll go to church, and brother, we'll fellowship with uh, whoever happens to be there. We'll praise the good Lord. Uh, but let's take, for instance, this: somebody loses their son. Somebody loses their daughter, and all of a sudden, everything has changed in their life. Their uh, world has been flipped and turned upside down. Now, it's not been done by God. God did not come to bring death. I come, saith Jesus, to bring life, to give you life and to give you life more abundantly. But see, when we are uh, walking in the ways of God, the devil, we need to understand, will do anything it takes, anything he's allowed uh, to try to get you and I uh, to just throw our hands up and quit. And when something uh, dramatic or uh, drastic takes place in some people's life, they forget all about God. They begin to question. They begin to doubt. And they begin not to do only those. They actually begin to start accusing and blaming the Almighty God who does nothing except love them. Did you hear that? The Lord does nothing except love you and I and the whole everyone in the world. That's why he, now, we should ask this, instead of blaming God, have you ever heard, if God was such a loving God as I used to believe and used to think, why would he take my daughter? Why would he take my son? At the brother, let me tell you something, and sisters alike, how come the Lord uh, gave his only begotten son that you and I could live? If the Lord God was uh, such a loving God, explain to me with your scenario how come the Lord, how he would ever uh, allow his only begotten son uh, to be spit upon, uh, to be mocked, to be ridiculed, to be beaten, to be made fun of, to be slapped, to be punched, no doubt, to be beaten and to be striped. And how come God, the almighty loving God, if he's such a loving God, I could do that to these people, I ask them the same kind of question. And hopefully they would understand if God is such a loving God, why do you feel he would or how could he allow uh, evil people to nail his son to the cross? I'll tell you why. Because he is an all-loving God. And if he wasn't a loving God, his only begotten son would have never came and been offered upon that cross. He was offered for me. He was offered for you, as you know, and he was offered for every individual man, woman, boy, and girl in this walkway of life because the devil may be able. Job lost everything he had, did he not? Lost it except for his wife. I think she was still hanging around, and he told her, you talk as a foolish woman. He told She told Job uh, to do what many people are doing today. Why don't you just curse God and die? Just get it over. And Job says, you talk as a foolish woman. Shall I accept the goodness of from God, but not the evil. Look, church, the good Lord give, 
the good Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Many people think and many uh, they don't understand one question. And I'll tell you something right now. Not only do I see it on TV, not only do I hear it on the radio, not only have I heard it in person, uh, but the question is, I don't. They will ask a pastor. They will ask a preacher. They will ask a priest. They will ask anybody that they believe might be able to help them. Uh, but before we get to the question, I'm going to tell you uh, nine out of ten times of uh, the preacher don't know, says he don't know, the pastor says I don't know, the priest says I, I wish I knew if I could explain that or had the answer to that question, uh, life will be a lot easier. And now I'm going to present the question and I'm going to answer the question at, uh, with a, a biblical truth. Uh, the question being, uh, uh, why do good people go through bad things? Why do good, loving people uh, go uh, uh, through life uh, uh, suffering a whole lot? People, uh, well, if I knew that, brother, I'll tell you why. They, uh, the good Lord himself suffered in this walkway of life and if they hated the Lord they're going to hate me if they hated Jesus they're going to hate you if they persecuted the Lord they'll do the same to me they'll do the same to you oh but I'll tell you uh, brother Peter reminds me in the, in the book of Peter that blessed are we uh, when temptation comes upon us uh, brother and uh, all of these things, uh, but the Lord, uh, but the Lord spoke through Peter uh, to tell you and I. Not only blessed are we, uh, brother, the Spirit of God shines down upon us and dwells within us. If we gotta go through life and suffer a little bit, I thank God to know uh, that we are told by the Lord uh, to simply let patience have its perfect work. And I thank God for the Scripture. Uh, that came from the Apostle Paul. Uh, brother, nothing in this life is worthy uh, to uh, be counted uh, uh, for anything uh, 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 for the glory of God. It's not worthy uh, to be compared to the glory that we're going to be uh, uh, in one of these days. I don't know what my Lord looks like, uh, but I'll tell you one thing I do know. Uh, one day, I will be just like him. Uh, brother will be as the angels in heaven. I don't know about you, church. I might not get in uh, 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 to what I actually wanted to, uh, but nevertheless, praise God, his will be done, not the will of man. I have and nor have I ever uh, had a desire uh, to be patted on the back and say, preacher, that was a good sermon. Uh, brother, any Anything that is good comes down from the Father of life. It comes down from God Almighty. And I want to take the time to thank God uh, for the uh, uh, hearing the prayers of His people. Uh, when, when sickness is into the body of a child of God, uh, brother, I know one thing uh, for certain. I know this beyond a shadow of a doubt. Regardless of a weapon that my be formed against the child of God. It will not work. It has no power. A uh, brother, no weapon uh, formed against God's people uh, will come up to anything. I don't care what the weapon is. Uh, many people go around still today. Uh, do they not? I rebuke you. I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. But I'll tell you one thing. Uh, the uh, proper way to do something like that is to say the Lord uh, rebuke you uh, just like uh, the angel did. I think it might have been Gabriel 
on Michael. Michael, it seems, a uh, brother told the devil uh, over the body of Moses. Uh, the Lord rebuked you. Uh, he did not make one railing accusation even against the devil. Uh, but mankind thinks he's full of power. I have no power. Uh, just like Jesus told the apostle Paul. I mean, not the apostle. Uh, thank you, Lord. A uh, told old Pilate, uh, brother, you have no power except it be given you from above. I thank God to know, don't you, church, uh, when people get up off of our bus and we hit our knees or sitting in the car, whatever it might be. Uh, brother, when prayer comes to you and I, uh, the people of God, for the most part, at least I would hope so, uh, they begin to pray and cry out unto God. How many times have you found yourself praying and you don't have a clue what for? Uh, but I'll tell you, church, uh, somebody needs to pray then and there uh, because without prayer, uh, God can't hear uh, uh, the prayers of us if we don't send them up. And if we don't send them up, uh, brother, how can God answer? And if we say we're a Christian, uh, we have faith in God, uh, we are to at least uh, be willing to show our faith uh, by going to God in prayer. Uh, that shows our works uh, with our faith, does it not? Oh, but thanks be unto God the same time. Uh, brother, when people do uh, come unto the Lord and begin to pray, uh, one thing I know beyond all doubt, uh, brother, it reaches heaven. It reaches the throne of God. Uh, not everybody that says a prayer uh, goes anywhere. I'm talking about those uh, that know Jesus as their Savior. I'm talking about those who have been covered in the blood of Christ. I'm talking about the ones, a uh, brother who was once dead, and behold, they're alive, and alive forevermore. And brother, just like the Lord himself, and just like Jesus said to Peter, uh, the keys of the kingdom I'll give unto you. And Peter, what you bind on earth, it shall be bound in heaven. Uh, what you loose on earth, in other words, what you don't allow, it won't be allowed in heaven. And what you do allow, Peter, it'll be allowed in heaven. Uh, that's really what he's saying today. Uh, but you and I, uh, we go to the Lord, many people do, and they don't don't know what to do. They don't know what to say. And many people uh, uh, fall into this category. Uh, they think because of them making a long, long prayers and saying some big words. Even the preachers today are like that. Uh, behind the pulpit, uh, they'll put you to sleep, church, uh, with the college words uh, that we can't understand unless uh, we've taken the courses in college. I'm not trying no, and please understand I'm not trying to degrade anybody and I, I thank God to know uh, that brother there's absolutely nothing wrong uh, with getting educated uh, but I'll tell you one thing always remember of uh, the uh, words of the apostle Paul uh, to those that are, are, are a Jew I become a Jew uh, that I might win some those that are Gentiles I become as a Gentile uh, that I might win some what's he saying a uh, brother he's saying uh, to their understanding a uh, uh, brother and knowledge is the way he's going to be and the way he's going to bring forth uh, the word of God. Why? Uh, so it's easy uh, for them to understand. Uh, but people uh, today, uh, they make one, uh, they do one thing more than they do another. They uh, fill people's mind and heart with confusion, do they not? God is not the author of confusion. And I thank God for that. Yeah. <sighs>
I could go on and get into all kinds of things with that will pertain pertain just to that a confusion and God not being the author of it. For instance, the tongue thing. But I won't get into it. What we can and can't eat. No matter who you ask, you may find if you ask a thousand people, you might get a thousand different uh, answers. But I'll tell you what, it don't matter who says what, who believes what, who thinks what. Now understand before I say this and go on, I will not go out here and try to uh, 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 make myself something to anybody that is weak in the Lord. I will humble myself by the grace of God and I will try to help them to understand why I might do this when they would not do it uh, for nothing in the world. I would humble myself by God's grace and uh, help them to understand. And if I couldn't, I just wouldn't do it uh, when I'm with them. That's all. Because if I offend my brother, am I not offending the Lord Jesus Christ who died for this weaker brother? Absolutely. But do people do that? Absolutely not. Do people love with a godly love? Uh, yeah, there's, there, there's some godly love going on in this world. There are some people who have faith in Jesus Christ. There are some people uh, who uh, uh, walk with Christ and they show their faith by their works. But at the same time, there's a whole lot more without a doubt in my mind who do not. They love the Lord. Oh, buddy, I love the Lord. He's so good. But that's mouth worship. It only comes from the mouth. And it does not come from the heart. And that's what I want to, I think I'll pause there and read a little bit from the book of James, chapter 1, verse 19. James says, Wherefore, my beloved brethren, let every man be swift to hear, swift to hear, quick to hear, fast to hear, what? The word of God. Let every man be swift to hear, slow to speak. You ever uh, find yourself cut? I, uh, I've done it. Uh, I, I, I try my best not to do it, but I have done it. Somebody will be talking and I think I know what they're going to say and I'll just interrupt them and finish it up for them. Come to find out, I couldn't be farther from what they was going to say. No, 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 that's not it, brother. That's what, be swift to listen. Slow to speak. Slow to wrath. Slow to anger. Don't allow your anger uh, to come upon you real fast. Now, verse 20, For the wrath or the anger of man worketh not the righteousness of God. Now, if we know that the wrath of man does not work the righteousness of God, we need to put it away from us. Why? Because anything without faith is sin. A lot of people don't even know that. But anything, no matter what it is, anything without faith, is sin. Now, since I read that, I cannot be angry all the time and actually believe that I'm working God's righteous will. Because I just read, that's not how it goes. And since I've just read it, I now know to do good. And if I know to do good and do it not, then to me it is what? Sin. Thank you, brother. To me it is sin. 21. Wherefore, or therefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness. That means abundance or abundancy of wickedness. That's another way to say it. And receive uh, with meekness the engrafted word or the implanted word of God. Receive the word of God. Put away our ways and receive the word of God, which is able to save your souls. But be ye doers of the word, 
and not hearers only. Now, a comma, many people are falling right there all over the place. Yeah, I don't understand why a good, if God's so loving, walk with God for how many years they've been proclaiming, and all of a sudden, first thing that happens, boy, where is your faith now? Where is it at? You're down in the valley. Guess what? When everything was all right and going your way or so you thought, boy, how good God was and God's so loving. He cares so much. He takes care of everything. I'll tell you what, the same God that was doing that way up on that mountain, he's the same God that's with you in that valley. If you lose a loved one, God's right there with you. If you're uh, suffering over it, a uh, brother, you need to know. And sister, you need to know, a uh, brother, God cares. And I'll tell you what, I'll go so far as to say this, a uh, sometime brother, a uh, God will be the only one uh, that will care. Uh, but he's, he's also the only one uh, that will walk with you and pick you up and carry you uh, through those trials, uh, through those tribulations, uh, through those heartaches, through those sorrows. And brother, let me tell you, he'll, he'll put you right back up to, uh, 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 sooner or later, right back up on the mountain, and you'll be able to look back and say, thank you, Lord, when I see those one set of footprints on the beach or in the sand, when I thought you wasn't there, God, it was just my footprint. Thank you for reminding me that is when you carried me. It's not my footprints after all. It's your footprints, Lord, carrying your child. We can come to that conclusion, but only if we will continue to believe and trust and wait upon the Lord. Now, uh, be ye not doers, but uh, I mean, be ye doers of the word and not hearers only. Well, why should we do that? Because if we don't, we'll be deceiving our own selves. If I'm a hearer only, I come and I hear what saith the word of God, but I have no uh, actions. I have no works. There's something wrong. I am deceiving myself. Well, I, I go to church all the time. Does that mean God knows you? No, it doesn't. I pray every day. Does that mean the Lord knows you? No, it doesn't. And I'll prove that in just a little bit by the grace of God. Uh, verse 23, For if any be a hearer of the word and not a doer, this is what he's like. He is like unto a man beholding or looking at his natural face in a glass in the mirror. <clears throat> I've looked uh, many times in the mirror, and I'm sure everybody else has too. And no, it's not because I'm stuck on myself or conceited. You know, you got to comb your hair, you got to brush your teeth, you got to wash your face. It takes a mirror. You got to shave. It takes a mirror to do these things. We can forget uh, as soon as we walk away, forgot exactly what we look like. Many people are that way. Don't be that way. 24, for he beholdeth himself or sees himself and goeth his way and straightway or immediately forgetteth what manner of man he is. Now, let me back up to uh, right here, verse 20, let's see, 20, um, 23, <coughs> is it 23? Yes, 23. Observing himself in, uh, beholding his uh, natural face in a glass. Now, let me uh, go to Luke chapter 6, verse, uh, what is this? Uh, 47, and I'm going to go right there, right now. 6, 47, says this, Jesus speaking. We can get a clearer understanding of what Jesus is saying in James. Luke chapter 6, verse 47, Jesus says this. Uh, well, uh, yeah, I'll, I'll begin with 46. And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me, and heareth my sayings, and doeth them, 
I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the floods arose, the stream beat uh, vehemently upon the house and could not shake it. This is why, for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not, talking about his words or the word of God, is like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against when which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great. It was great. Now, that's, that's the way it is. If we behold our natural face in a mirror, then we forget. It's like hearing the word of God. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, that sounds pretty good. But we forget it. That's, uh, that's what it's like. Verse 25, but whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty, freedom, the only law of liberty, the only time we're going to be free in this walkway of life, including good old free America. I know what everybody says, but there is absolutely, no matter who we are, where we live, there is no freedom except in Jesus Christ. It's as simple as that. Uh, that's what it's talking about, the law of liberty, and continueth therein. He being not a forgetful hearer, but a doer of the work. This man shall be blessed in his deeds. Another thing, when I uh, first started, oh, I've been a Christian all my life, uh, to the best of my knowledge, as far back as I can remember, next, next, uh, very next words out of the mouth, sounds like a lousy sailor with filth. 26, if any man among you seem to be religious, and bridleth not his tongue, guess what he's doing? But deceiveth his own heart. God's got something to say to you. This man's religion is vain. It's in vain. I'll tell you what's in vain, church. Right? Uh, uh, we can say so much. Re man's religion is in vain. Man's denomination is in vain. Man's... Uh, Ways of teaching is in vain. Man programming up the house of God uh, is in vain. Uh, it's not going to accomplish anything. Me praying uh, to God without knowing Jesus is in vain. The prayers ain't going anywhere. It's all in vain. Pure. You want to be pure and, and uh, have the religion of God? Do this. When the fatherless and the widows are in their time of need, you visit the fatherless. You visit the widows. And you keep yourself at the same time unspotted from the world. That is pure religion and undefiled in the eyes of God. Don't take my word for it. Read the last verse in James 2, uh, verse 27. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction, and to keep himself or herself uh, unspotted from the world. Getting ready to uh, uh, narrow, break it down, uh, narrow it down. <clears throat> With uh, want to go to uh, Matthew seven twenty one. Matthew 7, 21, and this is in regards to uh, James chapter 1, verse 22, which again says this, But be ye doers of the word, and not hearers only, deceiving your own selves. I'm going to begin uh, read 21 through 28 in Matthew 27. Again, Jesus doing all the talking. Jesus says, Verse 21, not every man or not every one that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, 
shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. He's going to tell us exactly who will enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. We can talk the talk until we're blue in the face. But if we don't walk the walk with the talk, nothing's going to become, we're not going to have any fruit. Uh, we're not going to be, be, uh, uh, be able to see any uh, prosperity of our fruit. Now, uh, understand something before we go any farther. <clears throat> I remember when I first came here. I'll take me as an example. Some of you were still coming here uh, when I came here. It's about 13, maybe 14 years ago. Uh, I could sit down and figure that out, but I'm not going to right now. <clears throat> Ten people, I think, were here. That's the way we started out, and that included uh, my family. Now, that wasn't much. Uh, we could have grown weary in well-doing, but we did not. We could have begun to doubt the good Lord, but we did not. How, do you, how can you say we did not? How do you know, preacher? And I'll tell you why. <laughs> we have a <clears throat> record of attendance back there. It's like 80, it says 82, but I, actually, I believe it was 85. Uh, but nevertheless, anyway, it went from 10 with my family up to in the 20s, did it not? Yes, it did. I remember that. The good Lord was working. Uh, things were prospering, taking place. Had uh, God brought the children in. Uh, God blessed us with all kinds of things to do in the summer for the children. God blessed us with uh, ha uh, having like yard sales or whatever, uh, opening up to the community. God blessed us with it all, did he not? Yes, he did. And then eventually it got to in the 30s. And then he hit the 40s and went on to being in the 50s. I'm talking about uh, the people that came here uh, when we would come here every Sunday. For the most part, that's the numbers that were here. I remember it well. And I'm not a number man. But see, I realize and I take notice uh, to the blessings of God. And then it uh, uh, went up into the 60s and hovered there for a good while. And then uh, sometimes it went up the 70s and 80s. And listen, as soon as the devil, well, I'll tell you what, nothing has worked. I've deprived them of this. I've told them that. I've taken this from their life. I've caused this in their life but they seem like they're being continually blessed. I know what I'll do now. Here come big, bad, bodacious, scary COVID. Ooh, scary COVID. Look what happened. Boy, I tell you what. Everybody took to running. And where's everybody since that day? Since that time. Where's everybody at since that time? I'll tell you where uh, most people are doing their own thing, living their own life. Do they read the Word of God? I can only say, God, I hope so. Are they going to church someplace else? I can only say, God, I hope so. Because God does not change. His Word does not change. And I'll tell you something. Uh, when we was looking over uh, in James, it said, and continueth therein. We can't just look and do for a minute. And then forget all about it. We have to continue in that. That's why we have to continue in our calling. Uh, now, uh, I, I'm going to start over at verse uh, 21. Jesus said, Not everyone that saith unto me, Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven. But he that doeth the will of my Father which is in heaven. Many... Notice that big old word, many will say to me in that day of judgment, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in thy name? 
and in thy name have cast out devils, and in thy name done many wonderful works. Let me, before I go on, I wonder how many people is, hey man, I cast out these demons, do it every time I turn around. Seem like I'm always having an exorcist. <laughs> I'm always laying hands on somebody and I'm doing a whole lot of good work. I'm about the Lord's business and Jesus ain't in their heart. They're doing things with their mouth and I'll tell you something. If you think the devil won't get involved and in try to make things look like it's coming from God, you better think again. The devil will get in and just, buddy, uh, wrap people around his little finger, make them believe that they're doing God's will. Even when they rise up and kill God's people, they will still believe and think that they're doing God's will. But nothing is farther from the truth. Many people will say, hey, haven't I done all of these great things? Am I not the one that went and preached in your name? Am I not the one that went and visited all of these sick people, the homeless, the shelters in your name? Guess what God's got? He's got this, uh, 23. And then Jesus says, well, I profess unto them, I Never knew you. I never knew you. Depart from me, ye or you that work iniquity. What is iniquity? Your own way. You did your own religion. You did things your way. You used the name of Jesus. But you'd, uh, and you might have done all of these things in the name of Jesus, making yourself look good, uh, making people pat you on the back, making people think you were something when you were not. But Jesus will say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you workers of your own way of iniquity. Therefore, verse 24, whosoever heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them, I will liken him unto a wise man, which built his house upon a rock. And Jesus is that rock, by the way. If we don't build our house upon Jesus, it ain't gonna it ain't gonna stand. Oh, it might look like it's standing against all kinds of things, but it will be diminished. It will be demolished, and it will fall. And Jesus is gonna tell you. Uh, what kind of fall it's going to be. And the rain descended, verse 25, and the floods came, and the winds blew, and beat upon that house, and fell, and it fell not. This is the reason it fell not, for it was founded upon a rock. And every one that heareth these sayings of mine, and doeth them not, shall be likened unto a foolish man, which built his house up on the sand. And the rain descended, and the floods came, and the winds blew and beat upon that house, and it fell, and great was the fall of it. I'm going to uh, wrap it up and come to a close right there be, uh, a, uh, after a few more uh, things. <clears throat> Listen, church, let's go right back to where we actually got started. No matter who you are, if you're a child of God, understand this. Death has no victory over you. The grave cannot hold you down. Man can put you in it, but it cannot hold you. It's powerless, church. It's absolutely powerless. It could not hold Jesus, my Savior and your Savior. It cannot hold you. That is absolutely impossible for the death to do, for the grave to do, for hell to do, whatever. No weapon. All three of those are weapons. They think they, they boy, we finally, 
just like Jesus, we've got them now, done away with them. I don't think so. Matter of fact, I know not. Jesus will call you and I if we're uh, under the ground uh, at the time, or our bodies anyways, because to be absent in body is to be present with the Lord. But he's going to call the saints that are going on first, and then he's going to bring them with us, uh, with him. Uh, and then the rest of us that are still here, we're going to be caught up into the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. No weapon formed against the child of God, regardless of what it is, can will ever prosper. Never, ever, under any circumstances, will it ever prosper. You know how many, have you ever thought about all the serial killers since the beginning of, the, oh my gosh, and it still goes on everywhere today. You ever give a glance or a thought about how many of those people that were murdered uh, uh, by these killers were saints of God. Yeah, it still happened. God's not going to stop it. Did God stop e, uh, uh, Cain from rising up and killing Abel? He didn't stop it. You know, uh, sin was already uh, entered. It was already there because of Adam and Eve. And once sin came in, buddy, hey, guess what? This is the old devil. You want to be introduced to him? Apparently, a lot of people do. But how many of those people, I wonder, and have thought sometime were Christians, and they're going to come. No, they think that they've killed them, and it's all over. But uh, uh, people, well, this is, their fi this is their final resting place. I got news for the world. Uh, if we're a child of God, the grave is not our final resting place. It can't hold the people of God. Our final resting place is a place that is not made by hands. It's called heaven, brothers. It's called heaven, sisters. It's glorious. It's magnificent. It's beautiful. It's beyond the comprehension and the understanding of man. Eyes have not seen, ears have not heard, neither has it entered into the heart of man what the glorious uh, things God has awaiting for those that love him. That is, is the, that's the ground. That's not my final resting place. You can dig it up right now. You won't find me there. You might find uh, what was the outside of old Brother Miller, but you won't find me there. Has no when I die to be absent in body is to be present with the Lord. Don't worry about none of it. I thank God that no matter what a uh, 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 a Christian has to go through, and uh, now we don't have to go through a whole lot of things that we go through. I, I I gotta say that a lot of times, believe it or not, you know it to be true as well as I do. A lot of times we bring something upon him or upon ourselves. Now we have to deal with it. And then, and only then it seems, Lord, <laughs> it's me again. I don't know why I didn't listen to you to begin to begin with. You ever been there? Of course you have. But see, I thank God get, uh, and, and close, my closing thoughts are uh, words of these. I thank God that he is just and faithful to forgive you and I. The day is coming, church. Uh, when our Redeemer, which lives, is coming for you and I. Are we ready? Are we in our Father, doing our Father's business? Are we looking to, trusting in, and uh, looking forward to that day? He's going to split the eastern sky, which is behind me. As a matter of fact, that's west, that's east, that's south, and that's north. All right. Eastern sky. <laughs> I'm looking forward to that day. But until that day comes, we have to go through things. When things do come upon us, we don't understand. I don't have to understand it, Lord. <laughs> you know all about it. You know everything. You know the outcome before it even comes upon me. You already know the outcome. And whatever the outcome is, Lord, by your grace and uh, by your strength, I'm going to continue to walk 
until you take me home. That's my uh, message today, church. I hope and pray that you got something, that you've been refreshed a little bit, you've been uplifted in your spirit a little bit, and uh, that you've been made to rejoice a little bit. Is all hearts and mind clear? Say it, brother. Yes, indeed. Mm-hmm. That's right. Never alone. Thank you, Lord. Yeah. Rain, rain, rain. Yeah. They've been, they've been a few. This woman had two children. And I think one of them, according to the news reporter, it was just a small baby. Mm -hmm. And the other one was a just couple of years old. Mm -hmm. that, that tornado come and blow, and blow the tree down on top of the house and pinned the mother and the two kids. God seemed fit to come. Yeah. Yeah. Let's remember the mother and the baby. Amen. Amen. I know they're still alive. But you know something? It's through the mercies of God that we're alive forevermore. You got that right. He's full. It's good this morning to know that we belong to Jesus Christ. Amen. Yeah, buddy. Amen. I'm proud that I'm here this morning. <laughs> mm -hmm. I'm thankful this morning that he gave us the opportunity to have the mind. Yep. Yeah. Yep. This way to worship. Mm -hmm. Jesus. Yeah. Of course, you know, if we ain't able, we can worship him anywhere else. Oh, yeah. Sure can. But you know something? The Spirit's always willing, but the flesh is always weak. That's right. That's right. And flesh is weak. Mm -hmm. That's right. Amen. Knowing where we're going. Best gift in the world. Knowing how we're going. It's good to be here this Yes. Absolutely, brother. Absolutely. You know what it amazes me? Uh that uh <clears throat> We don't know the mind of Christ, uh, but we have the mind of Christ. Mm -hmm. I can't figure that one out, but hey, huh, I probably will. With, with God's help, I could. Uh, but uh, <clears throat> we don't know what he's like, but we do know someday we will be like him. We know he's Lord. Yes, he's our Lord and he's our King. He's our uh, salvation. He's our Redeemer. He's our pavilion. Yes. Are hearts of mind clear? You want to dismiss us or, or me? Father, as we come to you once again, we're so grateful and so thankful for the message that you have seen fit to bring forth. Father, we ask of you, Lord, to always help us to be willing to give you your way and to let your will be done in us, Father, and not uh, our will or our way or anything that we may uh uh, think that we're going to speak upon help us to always look uh, towards heaven father and the for the guidance of the Holy Spirit and may we always be willing to allow you to fulfill your will uh, within us we thank you father for this church and each and every one that continue to come we ask of you to bless and meet every need according to thy holy will and do it for your glory Keep us in thy care now as we go our separate ways by your grace. And Father, if time tarries, allow us to be back here the next appointed time. But if it does not tarry, Father, I pray that each and every one of us are ready to go and to meet the Almighty God and to go and be home with him, with you, Father, forever and forever, where there will be no need at all. And Father, keep us in thy care and in thy will. And for all of these, save the ones that know you not is our prayer. In Jesus' holy name, amen. 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 God bless.